So, hello everyone, welcome back and for this lecture 5 of week 3. So, so in the last lecture, we, we started with the problem on part of speech tagging. Okay. We defined the problem as uh, given a text that can be a sentence. Okay. So, you need to find out what is the actual part of speech category for each of the individual word. So, there may be many various ambiguities but you need to resolve the ambiguities and find out the unique part of speech tag for each of the words. And we said that you can solve it using rule based methods or some probabilistic methods. We also discussed that the, the methods can be uh, generative or discriminative and they, they, they differ in the, in the philosophy of the model. So, in generative, generative model the class comes first and it is assumed that the words are generated the, the data is generated from the class and in the discriminatory model you directly find out the probability of the class given the data. So, we will in this lecture we will start with a uh, generative model that is hidden marker model and see how it can be used for solving the task of part of speech tag. So, this is a probabilistic model. So, so starting with what is my problem. So, I have some n words w 1 to w n in my corpus that I observed in and I need to find out the part of speech text for each of these words. So, th so, suppose that you have to find out a sequence capital T. So, that assigns T 1 to T n for all of these n words. Now, each of these T i s that are part of speech text can belong to uh, the my, my actual say suppose I am using the University of Pennsylvania tax set. So, it can take any of those 45 values. So, there are many many different values that these the sequence can take. I need to find out the actual uh, unambiguous text sequence given this uh, word sequence as my input. So, now how do I start solving this problem as per the uh, as per this uh, probabilistic model. So, 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 the idea is that among all the possible sequences of part of speech text that this word sequence can take. I need to find the one that has the maximum probability. So, I can write it like that. So, this is I have to find out t hat that gives you the maximum probability arc max over all possible t probability t given w. So, I need to find out the particular sequence that gives the highest probability. Now, so as we have already said t is nothing but t 1 to t n and w is nothing but w 1 to w n. So, I can write it as arc max t 1 to t n given w 1 to w n. Okay. This is what I will be doing. So, in generative model remember what is the idea? Idea is that the class or the, the tags come first and then my words are generated from there. So, I cannot find out the probability of tag given the word, but from the model I can find out the probability of word given the tag. So, I need to invert this di the direction of the probability here. So, instead of finding t given w, I need to find I need to use w given t. So, what is the theorem popular theorem that I can use? I can apply Bayes theorem. So, instead of directly opening it here, I can try saying argmax t p w given t p t given divided by p w okay. and p w is common for all these sequences the probability of the sequence. So, this again it is not, it does not matter. So, that will give me argmax over t p w given t and p t. Okay. So, this is because I am using a generative model. So, first my class that is my t comes and then my sequence is generated w. That is why I have to take it in this format probability w given t. Now, I can try and open this. So, this will be. So, let me just take this particular thing and this will be probability w 1 to w n given t 1 to t n probability t 1 to t 
the end. Okay. So now, so I can again use chain rule to write that. Okay, so that we can see in the slide. Okay, so so I can I can write it as using the chain rule. So this will be nothing but probability. So multiplication over all i is equal to one to n w i given w 1 to w i minus 1 t 1 to t n and probability t i given t 1 to t i minus 1. Okay. This is simply by using the chain rule, I can write it like that. So, now, so it is very difficult to get the estimates for all these probabilities that we are writing here. So, that means, I need to do certain simplifications over this formula. So, what are the simplifications that we do? So, so, one simplification that we do here is that, so in this formula, we are saying that the probability of the word, the current word. So, you see we have a sequence of words w 1 to w n and correspondingly we have a sequence of text t 1 to t n. For the word w i, what I am saying the probability of this word depends on all the previous words and all the text. So, instead of that, because it is a generative model, I might say that this probably depends only on the current deck. Okay. This is a simplification that I can make. So, this I can simplify as probability w i given t i. Okay. So, this is one simplification. Then, here we are saying that the probability of T i, the tag T i depends on all the previous tags. So, again I might simplify it by using some Markov assumption that it depends on either the only the previous tag or previous to previous tag. So, if I take only the bigram assumption, so I will say T i depends only on T i minus 1. So, in terms of this model, I will say that T i only depends on T i minus 1. Okay. And here, I will simplify it using probability T i given T i minus 1 and this is my bigram assumption. Okay. So, now, if I if I make the simplification, what is the model that we actually see? So, this is the formula that we came up with. So, I want it a tag sequence that has that gives the highest probability for this particular form and we make some simplification that is the probability of a word appearing depends only on its part of the speech tag. Remember this is a generative model. So, the word is generated from the part of speech tag. So, first the part of speech tags are generated and then the tags are giving each an individual word. So, we are making this assumption that the word is generated only from its own part of speech tag. Then so, this gives me the first uh, simplification. Second one, I will say that the probability of a tag depends only on its some of its previous tags. So, if I make the bigram assumption, it will depend only on the previous tag. Okay. So, this will give me this function. So, together the, sim the simplification will give me this formula. So, I want to find a tag sequence that gives me the maximum probability for this particular formula. So, now once we have come up with this formula, so what is this model actually? Okay. So, so, firstly let us see that can we easily compute these probabilities, probability w i given t i and probability t i given t i minus 1. So, how will you actually compute these probabilities? So, one way is that you are given a corpus where uh, you know all the words, you also know what are their part of speech tags. So, somebody has manually annotated these, these, this data for you. Now, given this data, can you compute these probabilities? So, for example, computing probability T i given T i minus 1. So, you want to find out how many times this tag T i comes after the tag T i minus 1. So, you will compute it by using the maximum likelihood estimate that is the number of times T i minus 1 and T i come together in the corpus 
divide by the number of times the word t i minus 1, the tag t i minus 1 comes. Okay. So, if you see here in the slide, so p t i given t i minus 1 can be found by this by using these counts, count of the two tags together divide by the count of the previous tag only. So, if I want to compute probability n n given d t, I will say number of times d t occurs followed by c n, n n divided by number of times d t occurs and this if I have the numbers, I can compute this probability. What is the other probability I have to compute? I have to compute probability of word given the tag. Okay. So, so to compute probability word given the tag, I will find out again how many times this word occurs with this tag divided by how many times that tag occurs. So, this again from my corpus. So, if I have the numbers, I want to compute probability h given w v w z. I will find out how many times the word h occurs with the tag v w z divided by the number of times the tag v w z actually occurs in my corpus. So, here if I have the numbers, I can compute this probability. So, all the probabilities that are required for this model can easily be computed. If I have a data where uh, I know the words and the part of speech tags for each and individual words. So, now let us see how we can use that for some disambiguation. It is not the complete model, just to give you some idea. So, once we have this, how we can use that for some disambiguation. So, I have a sentence, a part of a sentence here, secretary it is expected to raise tomorrow okay. and the ambiguity here is in the word race. So, whether the, the word race is a noun, an n or v b, you will see everything else is same here. Now, what are the probabilities as per my model that differ in the two interpretations? So, if you see the first interpretation, versus the second interpretation, what are the probabilities that are different? In the first one, you find you the probability of the tag v b given t u versus in the second you find probability of n n given t u. Then in the first one you find probability of n r given v b and second you find probability of n r given n n. In the first one you find probability of race given v b and second you find probability of race given n n. And because in your model you are multiplying all the probabilities, that means you will multiply all the prob all these three probabilities in the interpretation 1 and all three in the interpretation 2. So, whichever multiplication gives you the highest value will decide what is the actual uh, part of speech tag of race that should be used here, should be v b or n n. So, if you have the corpus, you know all the probabilities, you will multiply, you will find the number and this will tell me whether I should prefer interpretation 1 or interpretation 2. Okay. So, suppose I take some numbers. So, here so, difference is because of these probabilities. Suppose from my corpus, I find some numbers. So, I will I'll see here that uh, the, the, the possibility here is that the word race should be a verb, not as a noun. And if you see the sentence to race tomorrow, the race should be race, the word race should be used as a verb, not as a noun. Although, uh, noun is a more common category common part of speech tag for race than verb, but because of the context, it is more likely to have race as verb in this case. Okay. So, that is how we can disambiguate in one part in this simplistic case, but in general for the whole sentence, even if we do not know any of the tags, we can try to use this model to find out what is the actual sequence of tag that should be used. So, now, so coming back to this question what is this model. Okay. So, what are you seeing here? So, you are seeing, so you have a sentence, so that is the words, that is what you are observing and then there are certain tags that are assigned to each of the in individual words. So, in this model you have a probability of, of going from one tag to another tag and then from a tag you get a word. So, can you find, can you think of what is the model it corresponds to? What is the actual model. So, if you have come across hidden marker model, where you have the states and from one state you transit to another state and so on and in each state that is hidden, you can emit the observation. 
Okay, so the word here is observation. So this is nothing but the hidden Markov model. So, what are hidden Markov models? So just to give the idea in brief. So here you have the tech transition probabilities, T i given T i minus one. You have the emission probabilities. So that is word observation probabilities, probability W i given T i, and so this is so using this whatever we are describing is a hidden Markov model. Okay. Now to, to tell you what is hidden Markov model, so let me just quickly tell you what is a Markov model and how is hidden Markov model different from a Markov model. Okay. So what is a Markov model? Okay. So this Markov model is best explained using the simple example. So in Markov model, what happens? You again have states, but the states are also your observations. So suppose your state is the weather, the weather on the current day, and the weather can be sunny, rainy, or foggy. These are the three different kinds of weathers that can happen on a given day. Now, what what you are you will get you will get you will have these three states. You will know, given that today is sunny, what is the probability that tomorrow will be sunny or foggy or rainy? So this is state transition probability you will obtain. Okay, so so suppose q n is a variable that denotes the variable on the nth day, and using this model we can find out the probability of q n the weather on the nth day given all the previous days weather. And here if you use the first row Markov model, so, so we say this will depend only on the previous days weather, q n will depend only on q n minus 1. So let us take one simple example. So here, so the you are seeing the state transition, so, so that says that if today's weather is uh, sunny then tomorrow will be sunny with the probability of 0.8 and if today is sunny tomorrow will be foggy with the probability 0 0.15. So, you can see that from the ages that go from one state to another state also from the table that is shown in, in this. So, now once you are given these probabilities you can do certain you can do certain computations. For example, suppose you have to find out given that today the weather is sunny what is the probability that tomorrow is sunny and day after is rain. Okay. So, let us use the variable and I want to find out probability q n plus 2 day after is rainy q n plus 2 is equal to rainy and tomorrow is sunny q n plus 1 is sunny given today is sunny. So, how would, would you compute that? So, if you simply use the chain rule you will say that is nothing but probability q n plus 1 is equal to sunny given q n is equal to sunny times probability q n plus 2 is equal to rainy given q n is equal to sunny q n plus 1 is equal to sunny. Okay. And now, because you are using a first row Markov assumption, so this will be equivalent to so, this you will compute using probability q n plus 2 is equal to rainy given q n plus 1 is equal to sunny. Now, so you have to compute this probability and this probability and that you can obtain from the state transition graph. So, if you go to the previous slide, you will find out probability sunny given sunny is pointed and probability rainy given sunny is 0.05. Okay. So, once you multiply this, you will get the answer as 0 0.04. So, here you so will get the answer as 0 0.04. So, that gives you the probability that tomorrow will be rainy and sorry tomorrow will be sunny and day after tomorrow will be rainy given that today is sunny. So, that is how you use the Markov model. Now, this is the Markov model. So, what you see here, you have the states. So, in this case the weather so, on a day, so is a state and transitions are happening among the states, but what is your observation that is also a state. So, you are also observing the weather that is your state, you are observing that. Now, remember the example of part of speech text, what are we observing? We are observing the words, when, you, when I give you a text, I, you only observe the words, but what is hidden? That is the text, the texts are hidden. So, that is where the hidden Markov models are different from Markov model. The states there are not observed, they are hidden variables and 
what is observed is different. So, you have the words are being observed here and from the state you can embed the words. So, this is the idea. So, the generative model would be, so you are starting from some state, state 1, you keep on transiting to other states S 3 and so on and with each state you also emit a word, emission 1, emission 2 and so on and these emissions are nothing but your observations. These are your observations. So, you need to find out the underlying sequence of states given the sequence of observations. So, now, so yeah, so this is the difference we have seen. For Markov chains, the output symbols are the same as the states. So, the word sunny is uh, both state and the observable. So, what happens in part of speech tagging? Words are the output symbols, but the hidden states are part of speech tags. Okay. So, so hidden Markov model is nothing but an extension of Markov chain. So, in which what happens that uh, the output symbols that you are having are not the same as the states. So, states are different from your output, and we actually do not know what state we are in until we try to use our model. So, what are the elements of an uh, hidden Markov model? So, so what do you need for a hidden Markov model? So, you need a set of states, yes. You need the probability of transiting from one state to another state. You need the probability of emission given a state which words will be emitted with what probability. Okay. And you might also need what is the beginning of a state and, uh, and so on. So, if, uh, if you try to correspond a hidden Markov model with, with the part of speech tagging. So, we need set of states in our part of speech tagging case. So, the tags are the states. We need an output alphabet that is then what are emissions. So, the words are the emissions. We need the initial state. So, in our case that is the beginning of the sentence. We need the transition probabilities that is given a previous tag what will be the next tag and we need the emission probabilities that is given this tag what will be the word. So, now, so once we have this, we can also give a graphical representation to our uh, hidden Markov model for part of speech tagging. So, what is happening? So, you have a start state. So, here the start state is shown. From the start state, you have a probability of transiting to any of the other tags. So, what does that mean? You can start the sentence with some particular tags. So, this probably should depend on what is the tag that is more likely to start the sentence. And once you have this tag, what is the next likely tag and so on. So, this is your transition graph. So, this is what is shown in this slide. So, when we are tagging a sentence, you are actually walking on this state graph. From one state, we are going to another state and so on. And there are various transition probabilities that you can have over this state graph. And this you can model by using probability of a state T n given T n minus 1. Now, what is this missing here? With each now, with in the hidden Markov model, with each state you also have the word emission. So, from each state you also want to know what is the probability that you will output or emit a particular word. Okay. So, this is what is additionally add, uh, needed here. So, in the graphical representation, now with each state like 2, I should also have the probability of different words emitting from that state. So, here all the words in the vocabulary are, are written and given the, the particular state, what is the probability of uh, outputting or emitting that particular word in the vocabulary. So, that you need to define for all the very possible states in your graph. So, now, once we have both these, what is my problem? So, so, I can define, so if you remember, I can define all these probabilities once you give me a corpus that contains a set of words and uh, the their corresponding part of speech tags. If you give me that, I can find out all these probabilities. So, I can define this graph once you have once I have a corpus. What is my, my problem? At run time, I am only given a an observation that is I am only given a sentence that is a sequence of words. I have to find out what is the corresponding part of speech tag sequence that should be uh, that should be used for this word sequence. Okay. So, that is suppose I am given a, uh, a sentence like this. It is a part of a sentence. 
promised to back the bill. Okay. There are five words here. So, my problem is to find out what is the sequence of text that would be used for this sentence. So, how would I approach this problem given the state transition graph that I already have. Now, for each word, so, so one thing to simplify this I will do is that for each word I will I will find out what are all the possible part of speech text a word can take. Okay. So, remember we talked about this said that some words can take multiple part of speech text, okay, but, but none of the words went beyond seven part of speech text. Okay, and mostly the words were having, if they were ambiguous, they were having two or three part of speech text. So, for a word, if I can identify what are the part of speech text. So, I can only use that to have my set of possibilities. So, here for example, I will say the word promised can take only V B D or V B N, past tense or participle, it can be only one of those. I have to dis, dis, disambiguate among the two. The word two can have only one part of speech text, back can have four text, the can have two text and bill can have two text. Okay. These are all the possibilities. Now, each word can take any of these possibilities. So, now can you just quickly see how many possibilities are there. So, if you see here I have 2 times 4, 8 times 2, 16 times 2, 32 possibilities of the part of speech text sequences. Now, I have to find out among these which is the most likely sequence of part of speech text that is being used. So, now, so, so how will I solve this problem? One naive way might be I enumerate all the possibilities and for each possibility I compute the probability separately. So, I have 32 possibilities and I compute 32 different. Uh, so, for all, all the possibility I compute the full probability that is one, one possibility, but firstly this is not very efficient and think of some sentences which might have uh, say 15, 20 words. This, this will just go exponential with the number of words. Okay. So, this is not a good solution. So, I need to have a solution where uh, it does not grow exponentially with the size of the sentence. Okay. So, so what will be a good algorithm for, for doing that. So, ideally I want to come up with the actual part of speech text sequence like here it will be V B D T O V B D T and N N from all, all the possibilities and how will I do that. And that is what we will be discussing in the next lecture that. So, this is the Viterbi algorithm how do I apply in my HMM model this would be algorithm to come up with this part of speech text sequence in an efficient manner. Okay. Instead of doing something naive implementation that is uh, exponential and that is actually not feasible for, for doing it at for, for a large corpus. So, that will be the focus in the next lecture.